Hello Ed5 family, Robert Mwando here. I guess you have missed me just as I have missed you. It has been a while since uh, the last episode. I know the whole world now is gripped by the Christmas fever. Edify setup has not been spared this fever. Just as you can see my setup today, we are all decorated. Everywhere you turn is lit up by Christmas trees, streets and in homes. I'm sure you haven't been spared the bandwagon too. Speaking of bandwagon, what do you know about Christmas? If you have grown up celebrating Christmas like me, I guess the following popped to mind. Christmas is thought by most to be a wonderful time, isn't it? A time when Christians celebrate the birthday of Jesus Christ. It focuses on giving gifts, family togetherness, beautiful music and decorations, feasting on special foods and singing Christmas carols throughout the neighborhood. As it has become a tradition in most Christian congregations and families every year. All of this is supposedly centered around the worship of Christ. But is it? Ask any random person on the street about the reason for their celebration and you will be shocked. What I see in the contemporary Christmas celebration is so much about self-centeredness. Food and feasting, fashion and showing off, boozing and partying, all for human pleasure and less of worship of Christ. Why the hustle and bustle? Why are there more accidents, burglaries, robberies, and orgies around the Christmas season? Why the rush? Why the hike in commodity prices and services? All these must cause us to investigate the origins of the Christmas festival. Does it have biblical foundations? If it is about Christ, was it celebrated by the early church? Besides, if it's about Christ, why focus on one day? For he promised to be with us always. His name is Emmanuel, God with us. Why must we wait for December to celebrate his ever-present presence with us? I recently read a joke on social media. The unknown author wrote, In case you don't see me online, just know I have followed the three wise men to Bethlehem for Jesus' baby shower. Very hilarious indeed. There are so many traditions and perceptions that have evolved in regard to the Christmas tradition. Baby showers, birthday celebrations, and giving of gifts are used to justify the celebration of Christmas. Which brings me to another key question. Were birthdays celebrated by the patriarchs and early church fathers? If they did, this would give us a good basis for the celebration of Jesus' birthday. It is true that birth dates were marked through scripture. We know this because in the Old Testament, the ages of patriarchs feature prominently. Then of course, Jesus' age is mentioned alongside a few other individuals in the time of his birth, like Anna the prophetess, Zechariah and Elizabeth. And after that, the prominence of age in scripture seems to diminish for example, we are not told how old, uh, how old Peter was when Jesus called him or any other of his disciples. As though to suggest that the dispensation of the ageless and changeless one had been ushered in. I know bringing up these questions about the true origins of Christmas and other Christian uh, traditions is treading on murky waters. For centuries, these traditions have been handed down to us and questioning them raises eyebrows. But I believe 
the church of Christ in these latter days must build faith on truth and not on traditions of men. So what is the true origin of Christmas? I may not be able to say everything in this, uh, on this subject in this episode, but I will give you some highlights. Many historical sources show that Christmas was not observed by Christians from Christ's time to about AD 300. Saturnalia, the period of December 17 to 24, and Bramalia, which is December 25th, continued as pagan celebrations by the Romans well into the 4th century. The Catholic Encyclopedia 1911 edition in the article Natal Day records that the early Catholic Church Father, Oregon, acknowledges thus. In the scriptures, no one is recorded to have kept a feast or held a great banquet on his birthday. It is only seen as like Pharaoh and Herod who make great rejoicings over the day in which they were born into this world. The Bible notes only two birthday celebrations, one in the Old Testament and one in the New. We find the first occurrence in Genesis chapter 40 in the account of the dreams of Pharaoh's butler and Becca. After hearing these men's dreams, Joseph tells them that within three days, the king would restore the butler to his office, but hang the baker. You can check that out in Genesis 40, verse 9 to 13, and also verse 16 to 19. And on the third day, which was Pharaoh's birthday, according to Genesis 40, 20, the king did just as Joseph had predicted. The day ended badly not only with the death of the baker, but also with Joseph having to languish in prison for another two full years. The New Testament occurrence appears in both Matthew chapter 14, verse 1 to 12, and Mark chapter 6, verse, 1, verse 14 to 29. Herod holds a feast on his birthday and is so pleased by the dancing of his stepdaughter that he promises to give her everything she desires. Her mother Herodias instructs her to demand the head of John the Baptist as revenge for his condemnation of her marriage to Herod. Though regretful, Herod orders the execution, feeling bound by his oaths and pressured by his guests. You can check that out in Mark 6, 26 to 27. So one birthday celebration ends with hanging and a servant of God locked in prison, and the other with the corruption of a young girl and the death of one of God's greatest prophets, the Elijah to come, according to Matthew 11, 11 and, and verse 14. The major lesson in each of these events is certainly not about birthdays per se, but we cannot escape the fact that God puts birthday celebrations in an evil light through the details of these stories. So, I can conclude that Christmas is not about the celebration of the birthday of Jesus Christ. You see, if Christ himself said before your father Abraham, I am, it means we cannot tag and limit him to an age. Jesus is not a baby wrapped in swaddling clothes and laid in a manger as many of us still do carry on the tradition. He is our soon coming king. He is the ageless one of whom Apostle John writes, he was in the beginning with God, through him all things were made, without him nothing was made that has been made. The truth is the exact date of Jesus' birth is unknown. As the Bible does not give us specifics, as to the dates of either his birth or conception. So, when did the church start to observe December 25th as Jesus' birthday? The precise origin of assigning December 25th as the birth date of Jesus is unclear. The New Testament provides no clues at all in this regard. December 25th 
was first identified as the date of Jesus' birth by Sextus Julius Africanus in 2021 and later became the universally accepted date. One widespread explanation of the origin of this date is that December 25th was Christianizing of the Deus Solis Invicti Nati, a Latin word meaning day of the birth of the unconquered son. This was a popular holiday in the Roman Empire that celebrated the winter solitice as a symbol of the resurgence of the sun, the casting away of the winter, and the heralding of the rebirth of spring and summer. Indeed, after December 25th had become widely accepted as the date of Jesus' birth, Christian writers frequently made the connection between the rebirth of the sun, S-U-N, and the birth of the sun, S-O-N. You can check out the source, which is uh, Britannica.com. This calculation, however, is not accepted as fact. So, for a Christian today, what is the true meaning of Christmas? The church has always had its own proclamation of the meaning of Christmas. A proclamation of peace, sacredness of life, of salvation, justice for all peoples of every time and every place. The meaning of Christmas seems to have been hijacked by mass culture and the demands of the marketplace. So what has the church got to say about the meaning of Christmas? The church and the gospel story of Christ's birth does have a lot to say to a lot of people today. Here is the meaning of Christmas for some people in the old familiar Bible story and for people today. The true meaning of Christmas is love. John 3, 16 to 17 says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. The real meaning of Christmas story is the story of God's becoming a human being in the person of Jesus Christ. Why did God do such a thing? Because he loves us, he loves you and I. Why was this giving of a son necessary? Because we needed a savior. And why does God love us so much? Because he himself is love according to 1 John chapter 4, verse 8. So, why do we celebrate Christmas each year? Well, whatever name we assign this celebration of God's sacrificial giving, we must learn from Him to give, to uphold justice, and most importantly, to be reminded to worship the Christ Jesus, the reason for the season. What is the true meaning of Christmas? The true meaning of Christmas is love. God loved his own and provided a way, the only way, for us to spend eternity with him. He gave his only son to take our punishment for our sins. He paid the price in full and we are free from condemnation when we accept that free gift of love. Romans 5.8, one of my favorite verses says, but God demonstrated his own love for us. In this, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. You might have questions like this. Should Christians celebrate Christmas? Should we have a Christmas tree like this in the background, decorated in our houses? Does the giving of gifts take away from us the true meaning of Christmas? What should parents tell their children about Santa Claus? Is it wrong to say Xmas instead of Christmas? Well, to share your thoughts about the topic, 
leave your comments or questions so we can continue this discussion. And please subscribe to this channel and turn on the notification bell so you don't miss any future discussions. Should Christians celebrate Christmas? If not, what are you going to do to replace it? Remember, go ye therefore and make disciples of all nations. Happy holidays from me, Robert Mwando, Edify family, and of course from the great producers of this program, GNP Uganda. May the Lord preserve and grant you a prosperous 2022.